This video is going to show you how to route the Sprint, T-Mobile, AT&T, and International Samsung Galaxy S3. I will have links to this in the description. If you do not have the Sprint version, you can simply click on like T-Mobile. It'll take you to the T-Mobile thread. You can click on AT&T, and it'll take you to the AT&T thread. For this video, we are using the Sprint version. Let's scroll down, click this link first, and then just click the download button. Just for the sake of it, and the fact that I like to check MD5s, I'm going to copy this right here. I'm going to click Show in Folder. And I have a tool called Win MD5 Sum. Right click, paste, compare. They're the same. What we're also going to want to do is uninstall all Samsung drivers. Just type S, Samsung USB driver, uninstall, yes. That's done. We can close out the web browser. And now if we go to our downloads folder, there's the toolkit. I have UAC disabled because I have antivirus and I'm a very experienced person when it comes to Windows and Linux and etc. So uh, if you have UAC enabled, run it as administrator. I'm always administrator 24-7 so I don't have to right click and choose that. Like for instance, if you double click on defragler or CCleaner, if it says allow, then you have UAC enabled and you'll have to run this administrator. Click next, next, and then just check next again, and then next. And it's going to take everything and put it, you know, on your computer. And then execute the program. It's going to start up ADB. I'm going to go ahead and type yes. All right. And this is the screen you're presented with. It's going to ask us whether we have the AT&T, Sprint, T-Mobile, US Cellular, or any of these other models in here. Since we're using a Sprint version, we need to go ahead and just press 2. Now, we need to install the drivers because we do not have any installed right now. We uninstalled them. One. Yes. Install Samsung drivers to the USB computer. One. Enter. This will run the Samsung installation, which will put the required drivers in your computer. Press any key to continue. Click next. We are in the United States. Next. Install. You moved my phone! I wasn't recording the phone. All right, the drivers are done. Press any key to continue. Oh, I didn't have to touch it. Connect your phone to your computer. I'm going to go ahead and do that now. Okay, so at this point we do need to reboot the computer. Here we are again. All we've done is simply rebooted the computer and we left the phone plugged in the whole time. As you'll notice, under safely eject, it now says the SPHL710. Obviously yours will be different if you have like the AT&T, T-Mobile, etc. We're going to open up the toolkit again. Going to start up ADB. We already know we have the latest one, so we'll go ahead and press no. Again, we'll choose that we have the sprint version. Of course, you'll choose whatever you need. And for routing options, press 2. All in one route, number 2. Oh, before you start doing all this stuff, you need to go to menu settings and then go down here to developer options then make sure you have USB debugging checked at the top go ahead and press 3 and then enter are you ready to continue yes we are All right, it says make sure auto reboot and F reset time are ticked in Odin and nothing else. Sweet. Click on the PDA button and browse to the Samsung Galaxy S3 toolkit folder. I believe he puts it under the C drive, Galaxy S3, open the root folder and click to the file boot, insecure, SPR, Palin, this one right here and press open. Make sure that the file location is displayed next to PDA and click the start button. When the flash completes, you should see reset or pass. 
and the top left and the box turns green. The phone will reboot. Exit Odin so the toolkit can continue. At this point we haven't done anything. It looks like it's fixing to continue. I almost re unplugged it for a second there. Congratulations, the root procedure is completed. Renaming the recovery files, which is very important, otherwise they will install stock recovery when you reboot. Holy cow. At this point, I believe we are pretty much finished. Let's try to download Titanium Backup and see what happens. First of all, let's go to our app list and find out if we have Super SU. We have Super User. Sweet. Let's see if it asks for root permission. Allow. That's just a warning telling us we need to allow for unknown sources. Menu settings. Security. Unknown sources. OK. And then we can go back to Titania Backup, wherever it seemed to have put it. It's going to say that until you press menu, reload application, and now there's no errors. I purchased the pro version. With the pro version you can restore all your apps with just one click and there's several tools available to you that weren't before with the free version. But there you go. And it's pretty simple from here. Just press menu, preferences, and you can enable Dropbox or box.net or Google Drive or all three. It's up to you. And now they have check marks and you just go to schedules and you'll run Dropbox. That will take everything. Well, let's do it now, why not? Log in, press allow. And now everything that I uploaded for my Evo 4G LTE to Dropbox is now downloading and I will be able to just simply restore the apps. Like all of my keystrokes that I've saved over the years with SwiftKey, all of my 45,000 keystrokes will be restored. All my Angry Birds game saves will be restored. I won't have to start anything over again from scratch. If we go back to the computer, here you have a whole whole lot of options. We can flash stock recovery via Odin and accept OTAs. You can download, extract, and flash a completely stock ROM. So you can take your phone back to Sprint, AT&T, T-Mobile, or US Cellular, and they have no clue that you ever rooted it. We can press 10, install APKs. If we have a bunch of apps that aren't available in the Google Play Store that we've backed up, we can just simply restore those if you don't want to use the Tinea backup. We can push files, meaning if we want to say, you know, take a zip like Sanjima 10 or something, we can take that and push that to the SD card. Um, there's just so many options you can do in here. And if you want to reboot your phone, just simply type in 20 and you can choose reboot into Android OS, recovery, download, download and start Odin. There's just so many freaking tools available. I highly recommend donating to the developer. Pressing 25 will let you donate to mSkip. This person does not get paid at all unless he gets donations. I've already donated to him when I used his Galaxy Nexus toolkit and I will donate to him again when I can. His tools are way simple. You pretty much just choose the option you want and the toolkit does everything for you. This will probably go through tons and tons of updates. I know for the Galaxy Nexus, it's gone through so many revisions. He's added so many different options. If there wasn't something before, the next version might add it. If something wasn't working, the next version will fix it. Mskip is an awesome developer. So you might be asking yourself, what now? You're rooted. Well, there's several things. Now that you have custom recovery installed, you can easily install a custom ROM. Like two of my favorites are CyanogenMod 10 and AOKP. There's even a Jelly Bean version of AOKP available. If you want to stick with what you have, you can easily download and install the latest Jelly Bean Leak that's available for the Galaxy S3. On top of that, 
You can easily flash it using Chainfire XDA's mobile Odin Root app. I purchased it and I will be making a video on how to use it and walking people through it. Also, there's an app he made called Triangle Away that requires root and you can simply reset the counter on how many times you flashed a ROM. So right before you flash it stock, I'm assuming you can reset the counter to zero, flash it stock, and nobody knows that you ever flashed it. And of course, like you saw, you can just restore all your titanium backup data from another phone onto that phone. And it's like you never switched phones or left off anywhere. There's several awesome uses for root and mskip made it very, very easy with just a few clicks to root your device and enjoy all the benefits of having full control of your phone. If you have a few dollars to spare, please send it his way. He's put a lot of time and effort into this tool. He is an awesome developer that cares a lot about his work and responds to questions pretty quickly on XDA. If you want to help me out, it's really simple. Please give this video a thumbs up by clicking the like button. If you enjoyed it, please give it a thumbs up. And if you want to save it and watch it later, feel free to add it to your favorites. You'll be able to come back at any time and rewatch it. If you need to flash your phone stock or something, the tool does pretty much anything and everything you'll ever need to do with your Galaxy S3. And by the time you watch this video, it'll probably be on version 5.0 or 6.0 or etc. Because it will see many updates throughout its life. My name is Josh. My username stands for What Would Josh Do? I do videos on the Galaxy Nexus, Galaxy S3, Evo 4 GLTE, Evo 3D, Transformer Prime, and I plan on getting future devices like when the Galaxy S4 comes out. Feel free to check out my channel and subscribe if you like what you see. Again, this is What Would Josh Do? And I'm out.